Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to the Boring Company and Elon Musk. I've been hard at work producing another talk for us today, so let's get started. Today we're back on with our prediction episodes. We're on number eight now, so we're getting on quite well with that. Uh, today's one is not that controversial. I think it's pretty uh, obvious it's going to happen. So, if you're not familiar, I do a lot of predictions and then the plan is to go back and have a look at them in the future and see if I was correct. Hopefully, I will get them all correct, but <laughs> it ain't going to happen, guys. A lot of speculation here. There's a lot of things we don't know about the Boeing company and we're just waiting on that information. So, this prediction is that the Boeing company will run the pods 24 hours a day. Now, I'm not saying they're going to be running pods on Christmas Day or, you know, public holidays, but generally they will run seven days a week, 24 hours a day. I, other for maintenance, the system will be open all night long. Obviously, we're going to have some maintenance periods. Therefore, it won't be, you know, 365 days a year. But it'll be somewhere around 350 something, say. But why? Why would we want to run the system 24 hours a day? Is that not a lot of hassle? Is that not going to cause more problems? I don't actually think it will. Um, the main reason is you have no drivers. You simply don't have any drivers whatsoever. Obviously, we're going to have some kind of control room uh, and maybe some kind of security team. But other than that, there will be zero drivers. The number of people running the system will be maybe one one hundredth of that of, say, the London Underground. You've got no salary to pay. And you've obviously, you know, your drivers don't need rest periods. You're not going to have people ringing in sick. Thus, there's, there's no reason why you can't run this system 24 hours a day, even even on public holidays, Sundays. What else? Obviously, pods are small and efficient. That is one of the advantages of the system. You could say it's in a disadvantage as well, in that a train can hold more people. However... At night time, when the, these pods will generally be moving maybe two or maybe only three people, it, that is perfect because you've not got large numbers of seats empty. You've not got a driver who is moving, you know, 20, 30, 40 people in a train that has a capacity of over 200 potentially, if need be. So the, the pod is at least, you know, 20 to 30 percent full. We're getting a decent salary for that pod, otherwise it's not too bad. And all, you could run it at a lower speed if necessary as well to in further increase that efficiency. A lot of the pods you, you can just have charging overnight. You, you don't need to run every pod that you have available. You could run 5% of the pods that are available to you and then you are also saving costs in that sense as well. Uh, the pods can be removed and added to the loop system with ease, as I've just said. You can run the bare minimum number of pods just to, you know, move thousands of people rather than the hundreds of thousands of people that you will run at rush hour. So, again, that is a big saving. Nighttime economy is additional source of revenue. A lot of people, um, certainly here, where I live, work in the uh, sort of bars and uh, club industry at night time. Maybe they work in hotels. Um, certainly where I work, we have, we have people manning the security 24 hours a day. People need to get into work at awkward times and sometimes uh, using a train is just not possible. And the buses, buses are terrible. So it, it would definitely generate some money You'll be surprised how many people need to get into a city center early in the morning. So you've got yourselves, you know, additional piece of money coming into your system and it's not costing you that much to run the system anyway. 
during these off-peak hours. Uh, pods can be used more than just moving passengers. I'm going to elaborate on this in a future episode. However, I, I will give you a bit of a teaser as to what I am thinking in terms of moving more than passengers. Amazon, Deliveroo, Just Eat, and that is only the beginning. There are a lot of uses for these pods. For this transport slash logistic solution at night time. Here's our system. Obviously, we are connecting up to many residential areas. People are going to be coming into downtown, into the main areas at night time. Maybe they're coming back um, after, you know, when it when it's early in the morning. Thus, it's very difficult for them to get a train. Or maybe they don't want to pay vast sums of money to taxi drivers which is basically just a monopoly to rip people off. You see, I love taxi drivers. <laughs> I love taxi drivers. I do. <laughs> just not today. Uh, let me give you an example. The London Underground in London has a 24-hour service on Fridays and Saturdays. Five tube lines run a 24-hour service. Victoria Central Jubilee Line, Northern and Piccadilly Lines. Trains run on average every 10 minutes, which is fairly decent, six an hour. Uh, subway systems that shut down are more than just an inconvenience for late night revelers. For millions of night shift workers, they make getting to work a nearly impossible feat. So we are helping a lot of people. Um, and I'd say a good proportion of those people are those on low incomes as well. So we're helping the most needy in society as well by providing a 24 hour service which we can make a good profit on and it's not really going to cost us that much money to run. So why not do it? There's no reasonable argument against running the system 24 hours a day. Another example is New York. New York has been running, I believe, for over 40 years now, maybe more than 40 years, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and that's 365 days a year. I believe they, are, they run like a skeleton service on Christmas Day. Apparently so, which I, I just find insane that people would work that. But, you know, maybe they're not religious or they've not got a family. But if they can do that, then that's, you know, that's good. It's good. And obviously the, the you can get a train at, you know, half past two in the morning, which is great if you if you work in a nighttime shift, maybe. So great for the people in New York that they can do that. Uh, what are my final thoughts? Boeing Company can make good money running a 24-7 service. Potentially, you could charge people a little bit more money for using the service between uh, sort of 1 a.m. and 5 a.m., say. Maybe a little bit more, an extra 10 15%. Maybe you could run the service at a slightly slower speed. Therefore, you're increasing your, you know, your profit margin per journey. So... It, it, it'd be difficult not to make money running this service. You've got the tunnel there anyway. You might as well use it. If it's just going to be empty at night, then, uh, you know, what? why not use it? Why not have them pods that would otherwise be shuttered, maybe locked up charging or, or just sort of stationary in some kind of storage yard? Why not take 5% of those pods and have them working for you, earning a bit of money? Makes perfect sense. Safety isn't an issue. I had a th thought about this. The um, last thing you want to do is get onto a pod and some kind of weirdo gets on and you get assaulted. Uh, you've got to have CCTV on board. You've got to have an in-app panic button. It may be necessary that the identity of people using the service is known to the app, but they don't share that with anyone else. Thus, if something d did happen... They would know who was using the actual service, whose phone it was, the phone number, the person. They, that it, it wouldn't make any sense to, to, you know, sneak up on people on this system if you have the right security measures. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, again, my love for taxis comes back and hits me flat on in the face. Paying a taxi or Uber forty pounds for a fifteen minute journey is a disgrace, and it is a disgrace, guys at least 10 times in the last five years, maybe probably more than that, have I had to pay £40 for a 15-minute journey. 
And it's just, it, it, they're just taking the mick. They know that you've got no other off option in terms of getting home. So then you, they smash you with this huge charge. It's, a, it's not fair at all. So we want to get away from that. We, we want to put these um, rogue taxi operators out of business because what, they, what they're essentially doing is running an extortion racket. One minute they, they're charging you £7.50 for a journey and then in, in an hour's time suddenly they, they shoot it up to £40. Come on, that's, that's extortion. Right guys, thank you for watching the channel. Please like and subscribe. I'd appreciate some feedback on Prediction 8. Do you think it's a good idea to run the service 24 hours a day, 365 days, uh, well, let's say 361 days a year? Do you think that's good? Would you use a service? Do you think there'll be many people using the service? Do you think it'll make money or do you think it'll be a loss maker? You tell me in the comments below. And on that, thank you for watching, guys. Don't be boring and hopefully I will see you soon. Goodbye.